Anyway, Emmett Smith is here. Yes, the Emmett Smith, relaxed, ready to chat. What? We didn't put a microphone on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> South is here in the Coors side seats, the NFL's all-time leading rusher and Hall of Famer Emmett Smith. You were just saying it's cool to hear Pat Summerall call. Yeah, touchdowns. yeah, it's a voice from the past that's that just would never ever leave. I mean, no. it's it's a very distinctive voice. Yeah, um, you're still living in Dallas. We were talking about this just before this interview, and I assumed that everywhere you go, <laughs> drinks bought for you. Let me get your groceries. Here's another car, Emmett. No, but you're saying it's no, not like no, that. No, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. But I tell you what, Dallas is uh, the, the the citizens there and the people there uh, are very cordial, very friendly, very respectful of me and my family and and the time that we we have when we are together as a family. And so, but they're very polite. They're very generous, and uh, and I think that's just the way Texans are. And so, uh, you know, being, being in Dallas has been a blessing. I guess so. I guess so. It's been awesome. I'm it has. Thrilled. Um, Ezekiel Elliott of the Cowboys, he, he wants to be the best back in the league. Right. Why not? Going into week one, where is he ranked? Well, obviously he has something to prove. And yep. so um, he has a lot to prove. I mean, last year missed a number of games. And so it's about him bouncing back. And, and uh, the beautiful thing about Zeke right now is that he has had a tremendous offseason. No news is great news. That's number one. Very true. And so I think he's focused. He understands uh, what's, at, what's at stake now. Uh, and it's, it's, it's Zeke's and, and Dak's team. And they have an opportunity now to put their foot, footprint and thumbprints all over this team and lead this team to where it needs to go. And so I expect big things to come out of uh, our running game this year. I think D Dak himself will bounce back as well. Do you have a, a relationship with Zeke? Do you, do you mentor I, him a little bit? I wouldn't say I have a strong relationship with Zeke at all, but uh, we have uh, uh, been very cordial. Uh, in communications and uh, matter of fact I owe him a text to have dinner with him uh, now that they're out of training camp so that that's Zeke, cool. that, Zeke that's on me <laughs> my bad I got to send you a text so maybe we can get get together sometime in the next couple of weeks but you know um, like any football player out there uh, as a former player you want to you want to be a part of their life only when they want you a part of their life you want to impart wisdom wherever you can you don't always go up to someone and say, hey, listen, young fella, I need to talk to you. You need to know this and this and this. You don't always do that. And so it's better to have to be invited into a situation than not to be invited. I'm going to ask an inside the NFL question that I've always wondered because you always hear stories about guys the day after a game. Mm -hmm. Can't get out of bed. They're that banged. Right. Did you ever have days like that where you're just like, my body feels like everything is broken? Well... Yes, there were times like that during the course of a season where there was times when I got out of bed one time and and absolutely fell to the floor. Uh, it could have been because of the way I was sleeping. I don't know what it was, but thinking that your your feet are underneath you and they're not. And so there were weird moments like that 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 did occur. But for ninety nine point ninety nine percent of my life, I've been able to get in and out of bed without having any major issues. Still to this day, I get in and out of bed without having any major issues. No, I can't even do that. What's, uh, do you text Jerry Jones? Do you guys talk, like, his, is he a weird guy to, <laughs> he seems like a weird guy. But is he, is he less weird than he seems to the world? Because I feel like you must talk to him. You must have his ear, Emmett. You must have his ear. Jerry is not a weird guy at all. Um, he's just a man that, that lives in a world <laughs> he lives in Jerry world, yes, literally. Yes, he, he lives in his own world. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about wisdom is it's already been where you are trying to go. And, 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 and Jerry's gone through many phases of his life. What's his house like? Awesome. <laughs> That's all I can say is awesome. <laughs> uh, Jason Garrett, is he going to survive this season? I feel, like, I feel like one playoff appearance in the last seven seasons, mm -hmm. he's still kicking around. Well, um, I think... This season is still it has yet to begun. That's why it's beginning tomorrow night. And so I, I, I think Jason understands for the last number of years that he's been a, at the helm of leading the Cowboys 
that there's always this expectation of taking the Cowboys not only to the playoff, but taking them to the big game. And, uh, and I think Jason understands that better than most. And so there comes a time where uh, either you meet those expectations or you're not. And that's even as a player. Every player has to meet the expectations of their talent. Either you do it or you don't. Are you willing to pay the extra price to do that? And when you get a chance to perform, or are you performing on a consistent basis? And if you do it on a consistent basis, guess what? You're around for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Le'Veon Bell, he still hasn't shown up for Pittsburgh. What? What do you think of that situation? I think it's a very tragic situation, to be honest with you. I think Le'Veon Bell has proven that he is not only the uh, top running back in the National Football League, but he has been very consistent in terms of his performance. If we all judge and base our financial means off of performance, he has reached the pinnacle. And for Pittsburgh to treat him the way that they're treating him, it, it kind of reminds me of 1992-93 when I had to uh, miss games uh, to, to earn the contract that I still don't think I was worthy of getting. I thought I could have got paid, should have got paid a lot more. Uh, and I think Le'Veon is in the same situation. And I think it's unfortunate and, uh, for him uh, because uh, there are quarterbacks that are sitting on people's rosters right now that is nowhere near worthy mm -hmm. of the capital that they are receiving. What do you say to his teammates that are supposedly getting frustrated? I say shame on them. I say shame on them. Uh, and I can understand the frustration, but you shouldn't be frustrated with him getting, trying to get his money. You should be frustrated at the organization for mistreating him the way that they are mistreating him because he has earned the right to get paid as the highest paid running back in the National Football League. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Like people on his side of the football, his teammates are, are calling him out. I've well, actually never, I've never seen what this I before. Don't, what I Not don't, football. what I can honestly say is I don't know the relationship between Le'Veon and his teammates. Right. Um, but I do know as a running back, the relationship that I have with my offensive lineman is very paramount to the success of what I have. And their relationship with me is very paramount to the success that they actually have. And so it kind of works one and the same. Um, no running back that I know of will be down in his offensive lineman getting what he's worth. And it should be the same way. Because as a running back, I need those five guys up front. And as a, as a lineman, they need a guy like Le'Veon Bell behind them to make their job a lot easier. And if you're talking a, against your running back that has been very productive, uh, his running style is completely orthodox than most folks. Uh, I've never seen a running back come to a complete stop when there's not a hole <laughs> and create a hole. So offensive lineman, either you're not doing your job or you are doing your job or he's helping you do your job better. I think you might want to humble yourself and realize what you actually have back there as an asset to help the overall team become better. And I think Ben understands what it's like to have a great running back like Le'Veon Bell behind him. Uh, I mean, I got some uh, issues. Uh, I'm all ready to watch uh, football this sure. weekend. But I, I, I need new gear. I need new NFL gear. Everywhere I look, I can't find it. Can you help me out? Come on, bro. NFLshop.ca. You were out here in Canada, and you don't even know that. Oh, yeah, that, they just started that site. And started today, this morning. Wow. And uh, I've got some news because I've already been on the site, and they have Emmett Smith jerseys on the site. Boom! I'm ordering one after the show. It's not worth much. Okay. <laughs> All right. We appreciate it. No, thank you, guys. Enjoy I enjoyed the season. It.